Oh 
Thanks to God indeed. Ebenezer, thus far the Lord has brought us. And we can't stop thanking Him. Because we are alive just by His grace. And He who has promised us is faithful that whatever He has said to us, He would do it. That He came to die for us, shed His blood for us. And He intercedes for us on daily basis. And he has promised us that he will come back for us. For he has prepared a place for us in the Father's house. And there we will go to join him. Hallelujah. God bless you so much for joining us tonight. From your homes, we are coming live to you. From Grace Temple, International Central Gospel Church, Cape Coast. 
And I bring you greetings from the man of God, the father of this house, Reverend Rubin Kamala Oben. He sends his greetings. He's with us in prayer. And tonight we want to go before God in prayer as we get ready for his word. Kindly you close your eyes with me wherever you are and let's pray briefly. Father, we thank you so much for making it possible tonight for us to come into your presence. We are praying that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And scripture says that you sent for your word to heal. As your word comes, let it guide us, God. Let it heal the sick. Let it set the captive free and liberate the oppressed. May we have a better understanding into your word. And Lord, may we be doers thereof. That we will see the fruit and the testimonies thereafter. We thank you for hearing us in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight we are talking on something I have titled, God will give you a testimony. Hallelujah. I wish you could repeat it after me that God will give me a testimony. God indeed will give you a testimony. I have heard many people say, and I can testify that it is true, that whilst you go through tests and trials, if you don't faint, in the end, you will have a testimony. And anytime God gives anybody a testimony, it doesn't come on a silver platter, hallelujah. Anybody who has a testimony to tell has gone through something that they survived and God in his own wisdom enabled them to stand. And in the end, it was all glorious. Tonight, God's word to you is, he will give you a testimony. And so we're speaking on the theme, God will give you a testimony. You're asking me, how can I be sure that God will give me a testimony? I want to take you through a few people who went through certain trials and testing moments after which they came out with a testimony. We can make mention of our sister Hannah in scripture. Please give me 1 Samuel chapter 5, chapter 1, sorry. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Read the verse 1, then we read the verse 5. Then we'll look at something there. 1 Samuel chapter 1, the verse 1, it says that Now there was a certain man of Ramatham, Zophim, of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was El Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zaph, an Ephraimite, verse 2. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah. And the name of the other, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Listen, the verse 5. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion. For he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. Scripture is saying that Elkanah had two wives. Penina and Hannah. And Hannah did not have children, but Peninnah had children. And scripture says in the verse 5 that Hannah did not have children because God had shut her womb or had closed her womb. Someone will ask, is God a wicked God like that? No, he's not a wicked God. But he has a reason for whatever that he does. He does his things such that after you have gone through, through things that would bring questions that people will begin to ask where is your God he God in his own way will show up and give you a testimony I said tonight God will give you a testimony God gave Hannah a testimony and in the book of 1st Samuel chapter 2 please take me to 1st Samuel chapter 2 let's read the verse 1 to 5 God gave Hannah a testimony now this is Hannah's testimony and Hannah prayed and said my heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in my salvation. Verse 2. No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none beside him, nor is there any rock like our God. The verse 3. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Please stay here a bit for me. 
The verse 3. Let's stay in the verse 3 and let me point out something to you. He said, talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is the God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. Listen. What this verse is trying to tell us is that God knows everything. This same God that we read in the chapter 1 verse 5 that he has sat Hannah's womb is the same God Hannah is talking about here. And Hannah is saying that God is the God of knowledge. It means that Hannah knew at this point that God knew what he was, she was going through. Whatever that you are going through, God knows of it. This COVID-19 that we are going through, where it has shut businesses, where things have become some way. Listen, God is the God of knowledge. He knows it. And Hannah goes ahead to say that by him, actions are weighed. Everything that is happening, everything, our going out, our coming in, God knows it. He is involved. Let's go to the verse 4. The bones of the mighty men are broken, and those who stumbled are giddered with strength. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, and the hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren has borne seven, and she who has many children has become feeble. Listen, the, the, the theme of tonight's message is God will give you a testimony. If you believe it, you will receive it. And I have told you that anybody who receives testimony goes through a test. And I'm giving you an evidence here that our sister Hannah, the husband loved her. And yet she has no children. And scripture makes it clear to us that she had no children not because she had caused abortion. She had no children, not because of any sin she had committed before. But it says that she had no children because God has shut her womb. So you see, the problems that you are going through, the devil might be, you know, saying things to you that it's because of some sin you committed. The devil is trying to justify that you deserve what you are going through. The devil is trying to give you reasons why you should accept your calamity that it will not change. But tonight I am bringing God's word to you. And God says that he will give you a testimony. Just like he gave Hannah testimony. He's the God of all knowledge. And by him all actions are weighed. If at any point in time you think God doesn't know what you are going through. Tonight be encouraged that God is a God of all knowledge. He knows what you are going through and he is concerned. And when he does it you will testify. Hannah testified that. I who was barren. He said now I have seven. He who was barren. Has given birth to seven. This is Hannah's testimony. And yet you know that Hannah was mocked. Before the testimony came. If people are mocking you don't give up. Keep crying to God. Keep going back to God. Because he has assured us. That he will give us a testimony. Now, in case you want to know another person who had a testimony, I want us to look at Joseph. Please give me Genesis chapter 50 and let's look at the verse 20. You and I know all the things that the young man called Joseph went through. This guy had a dream and in his dream, he saw that God was going to make him a great person. He shared the dream with the siblings and the parents. And that brought about the hatred that he went to. But when you look at Genesis chapter 50, the verse 20. The young man forget about all that he went through and now he testified. Genesis chapter 50, the verse 20 reads. Joseph told the brothers, he said, But as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day. To save many people alive. Hallelujah. You know the story of Joseph. How this young man was ripped of his robe of many colors. How he was cast into a, a, a pit. How he was sold to strangers. How he was made a slave in the house of Potiphar. How the wife of Potiphar tried to torment his life. 
how this young man was cast into the prison. And yet, in the end, this is what the young man has to say. In the end, this young man says that God meant it for good. This is a great testimony. I don't know what you are going through, but you know, I can agree with you that the times are not as it used to be. We are not in normal times. Things are difficult. Businesses have become some way. Your source of income has been deprived or it's been taken from you. You are going through a serious issue. Tonight, God says, I should tell you, he will give you a testimony. If Joseph, of all the things that he went through, if Joseph could at a point say that, but God meant it for good, then a time is coming that you will also tell other people that all that I went through, now I can boldly declare that God meant it for good. Hallelujah. Oh, you are saying that all these are Old Testament evidences. Now let's look at something about the blind man. You remember the story of the young blind man whom Jesus healed. The book of John chapter 9. Let's read the verse 1 to 3. John chapter 9, the verse 1 to 3. Jesus healed the young man. He was blind and the disciples asked Jesus, Did this boy sin? John chapter 9, the verse 1. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. What could be more tormenting than this? That all your lifetime, you have never seen anything before. Blind from birth. I don't know when your problem started, but this young man was blind from birth. He had never seen anything. He hears people talk about things, and yet he can never describe how it looks like. From birth. Now, the verse 2, please. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parent, that he was born blind. The verse 3. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parent sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Hallelujah. This was Jesus speaking. Jesus, who knows everything, says that neither this man nor his parents sinned, but the works of God, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. People have given various interpretations to this COVID-19. Some are saying it is because of our sins. Some are saying God is punishing us. Some are saying God is doing this and that. Some are trying to bring out how wicked God is. By punishing us with the COVID-19. But tonight, I don't want to base on what people are saying. But I want us to look at what God's word is saying. What could be more tormenting than a man who was born from birth blind? A man. All his life he had never seen. This COVID-19 is really tormenting us. And the disciples asked, is it because this young man sinned? Or is it that the parents sin? Jesus said that neither this young man nor his parents have sinned. But that the glory of God should be revealed in him. What you are going through, it is not necessarily because of the sin you have committed. It may not be because God wants to punish you. It is that God wants his glory to be revealed in you. If you will stand your feet, because listen. God will surely give you a testimony. And you will tell people. They will see when they ask. Is that him? Is that not him? They will be confused. But you will tell him that. Oh. God wanted his glory to be revealed in me. Hallelujah. The psalmist said in the book of Psalm 118. Please take me to Psalm 118. Let's read from the verse 15 to 17. Where David was talking. He said. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tent of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. Please go to 16. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. 17. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Other versions use, I shall not die, but live. And testify the works of the Lord. 
God wants you to testify his works. The challenges that you are going through are meant that at a point you will testify of how good the Lord is. That when you stand to talk, you tell others to come and taste and see how good God is. Brethren, God will give you a testimony. It doesn't matter what you are going through. As a church, we may have been closed for a while, but listen, it is not a punishment. We will testify. We will not die. This COVID-19 is threatening. The death rate in Ghana is increasing. And you are getting terrified. But tonight, you shall live. You, you, you shall not die. You shall live. And why would you live? You will live because you would have to testify of the glory of God. Hallelujah. We will testify. We will testify. Somebody is asking, what is the meaning of the word testimony? God will give you a testimony. And you want to know what testimony is. I've given you evidences from scripture. Practical situations of people who went through stuff. And in the end testify. But for the purpose of this teaching, let me give you a definition of what testimony could be. Testimony could be defined as an evidence of a an evidence or a proof of something. An evidence or a proof of something that happened. An evidence or a proof of, of something that happened. All the people have spoken about, they had evidence or proof of something they went through and that which came out of it. Because for Hannah to say that the barren has given birth to seven, this is a proof. This is an evidence. For Joseph to have said that God meant it for good, it tells us that at this point, Joseph was enjoying some goodness. He realized his situation had changed. You see, one of these days, people will come looking for you at the old place where they knew you to be. And by the time they come, you'll not be there. When they ask for direction, where they come to the new place that you are, they will have evidence. They will see a proof. Oh, that indeed God has taken you from one place and he has brought you to another place. God will give you a testimony even in times like this. Hallelujah. Now I want us to quickly look at some importance of testimonies. Why should we testify as Christians? We would have to testify because it is a command. Please take me to the book of Luke chapter 8. And let's look at the verse 38 and the verse 39. When God changes your situation, you would have to testify, declare it. It is a command. The book of Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 8, the verse 38 and 39. God commands us to tell other people of the things that he has done for us. And when your testimony comes, you would have to testify. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 8, the verse 38. Now the man from whom the demon had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. Beloved, I have assured you that God will give you a testimony. And I am telling you now why you have to testify when the testimony comes. It is a command. This was a man who was possessed with demons. Jesus cast the demons out of him. And he wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus told him that no, go back to your house. Go back to the place where they knew you. Where they knew you were tormented by demons. And tell them, proclaim, testify of what God has done for you. You would have to testify one of these days. When the testimony comes, when God changes your story, don't keep it to yourself. It is a command. The second thing we want to look about testimony is that testimonies are tools for warfare. They are tools for warfare. We testify as a tool to battle. 
Please take me to the book of Revelations chapter 12. Revelations chapter 12, we'll read the verse 11 for the sake of time. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to, their lives to the death. And they overcame him. The him refers to the accuser of the brethren. When you read the verse 10 is there. The devil who accuses. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their own lives. Now if you look at this verse, the writer is pointing out two weapons. One of the weapons is the blood of Jesus. And we know that the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Whilst the blood of Abel is speaking vengeance, calling and crying for revenge, the blood of Jesus is pleading mercy on our behalf. The blood of Jesus tells God the Father, I went to earth for their sake. I shed the blood because of their sins. So have mercy. And so through the blood of Jesus, we overcome the accuser. That is the devil. So anybody trying to paint a picture to you that God is a wicked God cannot come from God. Because God is not a wicked God. If he was a wicked God, he wouldn't have sent his son to come and shed his blood for you. For the fact that Jesus went through all that pain and shed his blood for you, it tells you that God loves you so much that he will not punish you with COVID-19. And so we overcome COVID-19 through the blood of Jesus. And the second weapon in this verse says that by the word of their testimony, as they declared, as we declare the things that God has done for us, Bible says that the word of God is sharper than two edged sword. When you read Hebrews 4.12, it says that the word of God is alive and it's a sharper than any two edged sword. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. Why must you declare this word? And don't forget in the book of Psalm 118, the verse 17, David said that I shall not die but live to proclaim, to testify the goodness of God. And on the word of God is saying that that which you testify is living. So when the devil is trying to accuse you to make you feel that your situation cannot change and that God has created you like this and you should accept it. Tell the devil that, oh no, God is not that wicked to punish me or to create me like this for people to make fun of me. People mocked Hannah, but God sat up there. He knew that he was working with time. And when the time came, it was Hannah himself who came to proclaim that there is none holy as the Lord. One of these days you are going to declare to people that there is none faithful as our God. If you believe God's word, Jesus told the disciples, it is not this man who has sinned, neither it is the spirit who has sinned, but that the glory of God will be seen. When the glory of God manifests in your life, you have to declare it. As you declare it, you overcome. Whenever you feel down, use God's word to build yourself up. Scripture says in the book of Romans that faith cometh by hearing and hearing God's word because the word of God is living. And when you declare it, it revives the dead. Hallelujah. So we have to testify because it brings us victory. It's a weapon. It's a tool that we use to overcome the devil every day and every time whenever he comes at us. The third reason why you and I should testify is that Testimony serves as a point of reference. When you go to the law court, before a case is judged, they usually go back to refer to other cases that happened before. And they use it as a, a background. Please take me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. we we'll read the verse 34 down. Before a judge gives judgment, they, they, they want reference. When this particular issue happened in this year, what decision was made? And there are times when you are going through difficult moments, you need to testify to yourself of what God has done before. 
Hallelujah. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, the verse 34 says, But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it. I caught it by, I beg your pardon, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Hallelujah. The verse 37. The verse 37 of first Samuel. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the power of the lion and from the power of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, the Lord be with you. Your testimonies will be a, a point of reference. Remember times where God has delivered you and tell yourself that this one too shall pass. When you remember what God has done before and, and you, you proclaim it, then you assure yourself that this one too shall pass. If God has done it before, that same God who did it before, he would do it again. Hallelujah. Don't let COVID-19 bring your life to an end. Don't die before your time. Don't die the death of another person. Testify, you are a child of God. Tell the devil, the devil, you know what? Yes, you have brought this particular problem at this time. But the God who shed his blood on the cross for me, he's still with me. The God who healed the blind man, he's still God. The God who gave the buried woman seven children, he's still God. The God who made Abraham father of many nations, uh, even though he had no child of his own, uh, he is still God. The God who turned water into wine, he is still God. The God who raised Lazarus uh, from the grave, he is still God. Tell the devil that these are my points of reference. These are the testimonies. Uh, I lay them on the table uh, and I am convinced that God will give me a testimony again. Tonight, don't forget God will give you a testimony. Hallelujah. God is going to give you a testimony. Before we bring the sermon to a close, we also see testimonies as evidence john chapter 9 the verse 24 and 25 our testimonies serve as evidence john chapter 9 the verse 24 and john chapter 9 verse 24 says so they again called the man who was blind and said to him give god the glory we know that this man is a sinner and they were referring to jesus please go on he answered and said whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind in the past, now I see, hallelujah. When your testimony comes, when God turns your story around, uh, they will see it and they will be confounded. Uh, and they will begin to find out, hey, now who caused some? This one, who did it? Uh, you will tell them that I know that it is God who did it. Formerly, this was my situation. I was poor. But today you can see the riches for yourself. I said God will give you a testimony. God is going to give you a testimony. Don't give up yet. Keep standing. Keep your faith alive. Keep praying. Keep trusting God. Keep studying God's word. Build yourself. Pray in tongues when you pray. And edify your spirit. Tell your spirit that oh my spirit be still and know that god is still on the throne now he's going to give you a testimony and you tell them that what i know is that before my situation was bad but now i have changed and i am a different person hallelujah we say that testimony also serves as a tool for soul winning please take me to john chapter 4 testimony when you testify when you proclaim John chapter 4, the verse 28. It is a tool for soul winning. It's a tool for soul winning. And you see, I tell people that the biggest miracle that can happen to you is that, that you were a sinner before. And now God has saved you through his blood. What miracle is bigger than that? You, no, look at you. People look at you and they wonder. Used to get drunk. 
you know, you used to be in a particular situation. And now people can see it. John chapter 4, the verse 28 reads, The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man who has told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Ah, other people will run and follow. Other people will run and follow. You will tell them that, listen, come and see, come, come and see. I've met this man, Jesus. Oh, what's the son of I've met this man, Jesus. He's changed my life. He's changed my situation. Yes, I who was called barren before. I am now called the mother of many. I who was called poor. I am called rich. Listen, scripture says that let the weak say I am strong. And let the poor say I am rich. At this point, it will be evident uh, when your testimony happens. It will be evident. And many people will want to come to Christ. And that is why I'm telling you, God will give you a testimony. And you will proclaim. You will declare it. Many will hear it. And they will come and testify. They will come to your God. They will ask you to lead them to your Jesus. And glory and honor will be given to him. Listen. Don't forget that whenever these things happen, it is to bring glory to God. And so David said that I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the goodness of God. Our testimonies are to bring glory. Think of what your testimony will bring to God. Jometel once said something, he said that don't pray that God give me a child that other people will know that I am not bearing. He said it's a wrong prayer. He said pray that God give me a child. That others will know that you are a living God. David said that I will declare the goodness of God. You want to live. You want money but ask yourself what is your motive. God will do it. But he is doing it so that you give glory to God. Before I sign off, let's look at John I beg your pardon, Daniel chapter 3, the verse 29. Daniel chapter 3, the verse 29. Daniel chapter 3, the verse 29. He said, therefore I make a decree that any people, nation or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made an ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this? Let me read it again. Daniel chapter 3, the verse 29. Therefore, I make a decree. This was the king, Nebuchadnezzar. I make a decree that any people, nation or language, which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made an ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this? God will give you a testimony. And when people see it, what they will say is that there is no God who can deliver like this. Because they saw how immense your problem was. They saw how difficult your case was. And yet God turned it around. Don't give up. God will give you a testimony. And all will come and celebrate with you. You will declare to the nations, you proclaim, and you will testify that there is no God who can deliver like this. God bless you so much. I hope you have been blessed and you have enjoyed this message. I bring you greetings again from the man of God in this house. You will see him very soon. And wherever you are, we encourage you to keep following us. Keep reading your Bible, keep praying and keep trusting God. And look forward to your testimony. We come your way again on Friday evening 6 p.m. for the hour of grace. It's prayer time and don't miss out. Thank you so much and God bless you. See you again.